always enjoy these urban nave conferences because I think they're very unique in that they are not a conference of architects. They are not uh, an academic event where you present papers. They have an, an, uh, an amazing mixture of academic expertise, business, uh, architecture, politics. But uh, beyond that, even though there is some solid uh, academic research and some solid numbers, it, they clearly recognize always the art part in creating a city, that which is really difficult to define rationally, measurably, and even the setting, the setting of each urban age conference, it speaks by itself with a beautiful building which is a, in a certain way a reminder that uh, a good city is not just about reason but about feeling. Many of the discussions here are very much advanced country centered. Uh, for example, the discussion of whether there is too much uh, control of, by technology and uh, cameras. I think on the contrary, I would be very happy if Bogota had cameras every two meters uh, so that we could control crime more. So it's a different reality. I would be very happy. I think it's much, more, it's much worse for freedom to be in fear of crime than to have cameras. If I have to choose between crime or cameras, I prefer cameras much more, even if they can follow you around. And, uh, but uh, I also believe technology is freeing people. It's, it's improving tremendously the quality of life of even very poor people in developing countries. Uh, and I think it will improve it even more. They will give it a, today gives a plumber or somebody who sells cakes or uh, small service providers allows them to be rich by their customers. And uh, it will be it will make bus use much easier because buses I think have many advantages over subways, but. One of the disadvantages they have is that they're complex because besides a bus can go many places. So technology can make bus use much friendlier. Technology, I think, will also, we're only beginning to realize how it can open the access to education. Today, for example, every year 70,000 children graduate from high school, public high school in Bogota. And we should have 100,000 or more, but many leave school in the two or three years before graduation because they see they are not going to get into a, a university or technical school. But out of these 70,000 that graduate, only 10,000 have access to technical education or university. I'm talking about the public schools. And clearly, technology can be a means for many to have access to higher education. So I, I am, we heard here many concerns about what uh, the technology and whether Facebook can track people's taste or the information that supermarkets have about what you buy or whatever. But to me, is a very powerful liberating force in developing countries, which is only beginning to be used. Of course, for this also, like in Colombia, we need English. Uh, to have internet without English is very useless. So, but I am relatively optimistic that this will educate people in, an, in amazing ways. I have, for example, Twitter. 
I, I have uh, oh, nearly 100,000 followers, mostly, of course, in my city. And many of the responses I get are from very, very poor neighborhoods, extremely poor neighborhoods. So, this is very interesting. Yesterday I heard from the Minister, I think, of Science and Education, how to have students living together can be very useful in a learning process, in terms of learning to work together, to uh, develop projects together. This is, uh, this is an interesting proposition. Uh, also, I have always, I have always believed that our illegal neighborhoods in many ways are much better than those designed by urbanists and architects. They are much, they're really mixed use, fully mixed use. Uh, they create neighborhood, they have narrow streets. Uh, and uh, it's interesting that this concept, that these super planned cities such as Mazdar, can really be a little stultifying, uh, stupidifying, as Richard Sennett says. <laughs> of course, I don't go so far as to, as to think that, the, because in our case, we are in the other extreme. We are too spontaneous, too disorganized, the other extreme. But in our solutions in developing countries, especially where there already exists a tradition of self-built housing. We maybe we should use much more creatively. Self-construction was used mostly to give access to the very poor to housing. But now I think we can conceive this more in a way of uh, develop environments where you can uh, create much more interesting ar architecture and urban environments. Government or the city should provide just great public spaces, great sidewalks, pedestrian networks, roads only for buses, parks, and leave much more freedom to small builders to do. And actually, these low-rise developments can achieve extremely high densities.